So hi everybody. Uh, we first have a quick tour of Android in this uh, in this chapter. So why should we learn Android? First of all, Android covers almost 86% of uh, uh, OS in smartphone in 2018, and there are almost two billions of monthly active user Android. So this means that there are a lot of users that use Android. So Android runs also on TVs, cars, watches, and phones. And there are almost 3 million applications, and 85% of these applications are free, while only 5% are paid applications. What does it mean? It means that we have to target free applications and we have to embed some way to make money if we want to develop some application in Android. And finally, if we look at the age of the user of Android, we can observe that most of the user of Android are millennial. It means that most of the users are less than 20 years. So this implies that you have to develop games or applications that are related to this kind of people. So before going further with Android, let's just have a quick overview of Android. Android started in 2003 by Andy Rubin. Um, Andy Rubin worked at MSN and Apple. And he decided to develop a new um, operating system. And the goal of this new operating system was to benefit from um, the camera and the phone of uh, existing phone. You, you have to know that in 2003, uh, phones, uh, there, there were no dedicated operating system for phones. And so the, um, each company developed its own operating system. So the idea of Andy Rubin was to develop a, a Canva for developing application and operating system. So for two years, Andy Rubin worked on this project. And in 2005, Google decided to acquire Android uh, for $50 million of dollars. So then, nothing happens for Android. And for the two, two years after, nothing happened. And in 2006, uh, Apple decided to reveal the iPhone. And Google said, oh, I have to do something. And starting from this, they go back to the Android project and they rebuilt it. To rebuild it, they decided to create a consortium, which is the Open and Set Consortium Alliance. And the idea was to mix all the big company of phone to create the operating system. So 35%, 35 uh, companies were grouped to build the operating system, which is Android, and all the framework and so on. And there are some companies that didn't want to participate to this project, Nokia, Apple, Microsoft, for instance. We can observe that only Apple, which was not in the alliance, uh, survived to this uh, big change in phones and tablets. So the main idea of Android was to build um, a competitor to Apple. And the idea was to build the operating system. And over this operating system, each company can build its own uh, framework and visual interface to have a dedicated user experience. So from 2007 to 2008, they worked. And finally, they released the first uh, Android uh, phone, which was an Android S SDK1 on T-Mobile G1. And this is uh, this picture. So we can observe that there, there is no multi-touch and so on. It's just touches, physical touches. OK, so then in 2010, Android uh, becomes profitable for Google. So just around seven years after I've, I've been acquired, Android is profitable. So starting from this, Google decided to make profits with Android. And they released their own phones, Nexus 1 and Nexus S and Samsung, which is a major um, 
actor in Android decided to uh, release its phone, its first tablet. Okay. So in 2010 and 2011, Android was used for other purposes. For instance, auto radio with Parrot auto radio, uh, TVs. The, the first TVs was around 2010, and netbooks. Then Google observed that Android was not as profitable as uh, wanted. And what is the reason? The reason is that uh, Apple ecosystem was better. Apple ecosystem was better because there was the App Store and the App Store group music and um, application. So Google decided to merge Google Music and Google Market. And from this point, Google uh, acquired new users because there were a single platform to download all of this music and so on. And from this time, Google and Android uh, were more profitable and they, over, they overlap uh, Apple. Then in 2014, we can observe that some wearables were uh, developed for Android and some automobile uh, application. And in 2015, there was the Brio project. The goal of the Brio project was to build some protocols uh, that are memory uh, efficient for small uh, captor and so on. And this is it. So let's have a look to the Android uh, fantasy. First of all, uh, there is the bug droid. The bug droid is uh, uh, a tribute to Gotland and the third encounter. So there is the game here. It's an Atari game from the 80s. And we can observe that there is a bug droid. And the goal is to run uh, in some labyrinths. OK, so each version of Android is provided with its own bug droid. And here I summarized uh, all the version and all the features of Android. So first of all, we can observe that from 2009, uh, there were widgets in Android. So widgets are just small part of applications that we can embed inside of uh, our phone to have a quick access uh, in the home screen of uh, our phone. And so from the beginning of Android, this notion of widgets were available. While in iOS, we have to wait seven years to, to have this. Then we can observe that the gesture appears in Android, and then the multi-touch. So we have to wait May 2010 to have the pitch to zoom um, option, which was available from the beginning in iOS. And then we can observe that every year, there are some new version of the Android uh, framework. So we can observe that Gingerbread provide NFC and 4G. We can observe that in July 2011, multitask were available for, uh, I, for Android. And in 2011, there was also, also uh, virtual buttons. It means that no, we can just have not physical buttons, but we can have virtual buttons. Then Jelly Beans uh, provide better notifications, and KitKat, Lollipop, and Marshmallow increase the performances of our application. And finally, I will talk to Pi and Rio later. So now that we have seen that the version are provided every year, uh, we can ask, what is the repartition, what is the distribution of, of this version? And here we can observe that it's a mess. Why it's a mess? Because there are some old versions that, that have a good, a great market share. Here we can observe that KitKat has only 8% of the market share. Pi has only 0.3% of the market share, while Nougat has 30% of the market share. If we look at this, we can observe that Nougat is a version from 2016. So this is a major problem in Android. It means that now we have to deal with fragmentation when we build an application. We cannot assume, as in iOS, that 
everybody has the latest version of the version before, but we have to target some versions that are five years older or six years older. So this is difficult because framework changes, and we have to adapt our application to these frameworks. So wh why this is the case where iOS succeeds uh, in managing the, the version? The problem is that each company can define its own layout for GUI, GUI, okay? And when we have this, and there is a new version that is provided by Android, the company has to update its version. But since the company wants to sell phones, it prefers to focus the effort on new phones rather than supporting the old ones. So this is the main problem of Android. OK, so now that we have seen the fragmentation, we can have a look to royalties, license, and open source uh, uh, topics. Uh, we can observe that Microsoft earn royalty on each Android device. So and, uh, Microsoft has patents, and it earns between 5 and $15 for each phone which is sell with Android. Moreover, Android is built on a Linux, so we have new uh, license. So there is a part of Android which is free and you can change. And there are also the, there are also the Apache software license, version 2, which is for the framework Android. And finally, if we, you want to develop in uh, Android, you have to develop with XML and C++, Kotlin, or Java. So what is the, the Android phone? The Android phone has four uh, buttons. We can see that some of these buttons are now removed, but there are four buttons in the, the, framework, in, in the framework. The home button, which, goes, which allows you to go back to the home menu, the, the home page. The menu button that can allow you to display some menu. The console button, which allows you to go back or to say no. And the search lookup. And this allows you to have a search inside of your application or inside of the phone. So we can observe that if you look to your phone, the last button disappears, but we, you, can also, you can still target it for some action. So to sum up, uh, Android operating system is the most important operating system in the world. And even Windows is not available at such a point. iOS has only a, fourth, a, four, a quarter of uh, Android operating system in terms of share market. And we have to handle a lot of phones uh, which, with different API, with different hardware. And we have to handle this into a single app. And so the most important thing when you want to develop to Android is to not reinvent the wheel. Because if you reinvent the wheel, you will last a huge time. So use framework and use components that are already uh, provided by Android. <laughs>